Hello, everyone. This is Monsef Afker, and thank you so much for joining us in this new call of Your Divine Uniqueness. So thank you for your presence. And um, yeah, also very really excited that Kim Van de Sande is, is with us with us on the on, on the show. And um maybe you already know her, you know, you, you already know her because you're one of your her audience, but also I shared about my appearance on her podcasts in the last couple of weeks. Uh, it was on email and then on social media. And uh yeah, I'm very excited that that now she's she's uh, a guest on on our show. So, because I really love her energy and um, also her her message is really profound, very empowering, and how to say also very real. It's she gives guidance that really can help you in in the real life how to embrace your power, how to remember um, who we truly are, and really embody that in 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 our day to day life, and. Um, I really love that because it's how to say it makes spirituality more more understandable, more easier to um, to to embody. Uh, because many times some spiritual aspects can be very uh, very esoteric, and it can be sometimes challenging to 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 bring that to to um, or to reflect that into our physical reality. So I, I love her approach, her message, and three really her work. So. Very excited that she's she's here with us today. And um, for those of you who are new to her, she is um, a sacred architect, cosmic channel, Akashic Records master, high priestess, best-selling author, and transformational teacher. And uh, today's call will be about uh, divine love codes of the flower of love. Uh, so we'll, she will be sharing about that. She will share um, uh, an empowering flower flower of love transmission. Uh, it will be very, very powerful. So also later um, on the call, we'll have a Q&A. So as always, if you want to ask your question, you can raise your hand uh, by pressing reactions, then raise your raise hand on Zoom. If you are on the phone, you can click on star nine. And also you can type your questions on Zoom app and also on YouTube. And uh, yeah, so with that, Kim, welcome to the show. We're happy to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to share yet another inspiring conversation with you. And uh, thank you for this introduction and for sharing. And uh, yeah, it's an honor to now share on your show these beautiful codes and yeah, to empower others to step into their mission and their purpose and their light. So thank you. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, very happy to have you here. And uh, yeah, so in the beginning, I would love if you can tell us about your your work. Um yeah. So we can have, like, our audience can have an idea about it. Yes, of course. Theory. It is like okay. many of you, like, um, yeah, it, it has been growing and understanding have been coming throughout my whole life. And there have been many moments just like you, where I had my challenges, where I had my activations. I now call them initiations because I see that through the challenging moments we have in our life, um, we are also being called to remember. Um, and that is what I've been doing like when I grew up my father died when I was very young very young so it made me look different at life where I felt like okay there needs to be more this can't be life so as at a young age I already started to search for other things I felt other things but still I as a lot of you copied to the world around me I thought this is the way we need to be why am I different and I don't fit in so and the rest is just having fun and enjoying life so maybe I need to approach life in their way and in that I lost a part of myself and what I noticed is throughout my whole life are the challenges I had and the, the the obstacles and like having a burnout and and having a chronic Lyme disease after a couple of years it was my soul calling me home. I can now see that it were initiations of my soul that were screaming like, Kim, remember, remember your light, remember your essence, remember your power and your potency. And through that, these teachings came in. And through that, I got reconnected to the field of love because one thing, and, and it is also evolving through me, one thing that I'm now fully understanding is that we are the totality of our being. And it is within our shadow layers. It is within the layers we have pushed away because they were too painful. They were too, too uh, fearful. 
it is within these layers that our wisdom resides. And that is the moment, like a couple of years back when I, with my chronic illness, with my chronic Lyme, there was one moment where I couldn't do anything anymore. I was just, well, in a way, my body was forcing me to stop and to listen again to the whispers of my soul. And in that, the flower of love arose. In that, I was reconnected to the field of love. But it was through everything coming to this halt and me really taking this time to go within, but also to face these deeper layers. Because healing and activation and whatever, it is about embracing every part of our being. So in that moment, in that deep initiation, I was forced to face the deepness of my soul, the things that I have pushed away for many years, that I was not ready for, that I was not ready to listen. And sometimes these things even are from past lifetimes and galactic systems and whatever. We carry so much within us. But it is when we are empowered with love that we can embrace all these parts and we can discover the wisdom that is within these parts we've pushed away. And uh, yeah, now I'm on this empowering journey to empower others with love and through what I teach because I'm all about the embodied experience. Yes, we can all, all have all these amazing downloads and can understand the galactic and channel but if we don't, don't do anything with it in physical life, it only stays a concept. It only stays a beautiful experience in a meditation. But then the moment we walk out of the door and it's like, okay, now my 3D life starts again. And how do I infuse all that I saw there into physical reality? And that is what we're all being called to do. Yes, to have these amazing experiences, but to then anchor them. And, and for that, love is needed. Because when we want to anchor these higher vibrations, then all our fears come up, all our limitations, all our doubts, and who am I? And yeah, so it, it is with love that we are able to anchor that and with love that we are able to deepen within ourselves. And yeah, I really stand for the message of resilience because love really makes us resilient. It makes us to say yes to life, to every experiences and to everything that comes on our path. And that is how... Fast forwarding the many, the Flower of Love lineage was born and the Flower of Love teachings came forward. But it was something I've been working with many lifetimes. But it was through the moment of stillness that it could come up. So, yeah. A little introduction. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and I love it. It's, 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 it's very inspiring because, um, like you said, like in, in those moments when, when things maybe either there's physical uh, issues or maybe things just don't flow for yeah. us, it's, even no matter what we try, it just, yeah, just, yeah. it feels like everything is is stopping. But then we, when we try to see through that, when we try to understand like the message behind that, then when the activation starts, start to happen, and this is what's what you shared. Yes. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for that. But, but, and, but it's also, yeah, it also okay. within the deep surrendering, it's like in that moment, exactly. I, I, I couldn't do anything anymore. So I surrendered, I surrendered to just being and in the beingness, but it takes a lot of courage, also just in physical life. Our mind constantly kicks in and it has an idea about how life needs to be and an idea about what we want to create. And if it doesn't happen in a way we think it needs to happen, we keep on forcing and we keep on holding on. And I get it. I've done it too. But the moment I was ready to let go, the moment I was just stand with fierce love and say, yes, universe, yes, soul, show me the way, magical things opened up. But it was by me listening to my heart by me letting love guide me instead of the rational mind and but that is asking us to be brave because it's not something we have been taught and it's asking us to feel emotions we have not been wanting to feel it is asking us to communicate with with our body with our emotions and in the end it's the most natural thing but i haven't been taught at school what my emotions want to share with me i haven't been taught the language of my soul of my so it is for me, it is really a journey, and that's also what I guide others in. It's like it's a journey of unlearning. It's a journey of deeply remembering because it's not about learning new things. It is about letting go of all the layers that are not us, the illusions, the distortions, everything, to, to come back to the essence of who we are. Because in our essence, we are whole. The magic, the wisdom, everything is within us. Our seed of creation in the Flower of Love teachings, we share your seed of creation. You've brought that with you when you were in the higher dimensions, thinking, okay, what do I need on this earthly journey? Everything is in there, but you need to remember. And you need love to go so deep that you can connect with that again. And yeah. yeah. Yes. Very beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm passionate about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, maybe my, my, my first question would be, what is the flower of love? And also part of that is Mikalia's question. How does yes, it, I see it compare yes. to the flower of yeah. life? 
A very beautiful question. So how it came in to me, like I, I, I channeled the book in 20 hours and it was a huge download that came in. And what they shared with me, the flower, of, yeah, you have the flower of life. And on earth, we have been anchoring light for many lifetimes. There have many, there have been many beautiful ascended masters on earth and light beings in form who have anchored light. But now our next evolutionary step is asking love. So you have the blueprint of the flower of love. You have this beautiful structure. I have it. Well, here you see an image of it, the flower of life. But within this structure, there's much more possible when we embrace it with love and we're even able to expand out of it. So love, the flower of love, it is our divine feminine that is now ready. So we have anchored love in our being, in consciousness, and now it's ready to let these seeds of light come out with love. So it is like the next evolutionary step because light is very it's very strong it's very centered and now it's here on earth in many dimensions it is within us it is within the seeds that are within the earth it is within consciousness but even if you would see it like a flower a flower needs nourishment a flower needs love it needs attention for it to blossom for it to open and that is the same with us we now need the unconditional love to say yes to every part of our being we have been working hard to create these openings in consciousness with light with force but now it's allowing these openings to fluidly go because if we try to force our next way in evolutionary, it will only create the same ripples. And now it's allowing every part of our being. That's also love is unconditional. So it says it is the totality of our being. It is embracing our shadows and our beauties because they are part of the wholeness. And when we can do that, that is when we can truly elevate. The whole teachings are about building a strong energetic foundation within yourself. Because when you keep sabotaging things within yourself, when you keep pushing parts of yourself away because they are not good enough, or you're scared about it, or you think you are too much, or you're afraid of your power, you will never evolve in a way that can support you. It's like building a house on a not strong foundation so what the flower of love is supporting in is really awakening your divine feminine so that it can evolve your divine masculine and then from this co-creation within yourself you can create a divine child so it is the the harmonization and the awakening of of intuition of like because that is also what love does when you have this strong foundation within yourself you're able to receive your divine guidance and able to say yes, even though you don't know what it is. But if you respond from your wounded part, your wounded feminine or masculine, it is afraid, it sees all limitations, it's sabotaging itself, it doesn't work out. So this is really uh, in many dimensions asking us to step up in a new way. So yeah, I hope that yeah. answered both of your questions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. And also... Uh... As you were sharing that, I remember that just earlier you, you shared about uh, surrendering and yeah. also letting letting go of the old ways and uh, being more open to new ways of of creation, creating, and living our life. And also, this is parts. I believe this is part of love and yeah. maybe uh, giving more love to ourselves because um, when we try to hold on to those old ways, at some point they don't serve us anymore. And some point, and also it can maybe. Uh, create issues and challenges for us when we don't let go so it's more how to say even if the change feels uncomfortable yeah like stepping into the new the new path or maybe the new way it's it's really part of loving ourselves and it then is. we share that with with the yeah. world yeah but even parts we've pushed away what i noticed within myself and what i'm being like it's a daily practice because each time we grow and expand, each time we create something new, it is inviting us to stretch. It is inviting us to grow, to expand. So like in my book, it shares beautiful, like uh, if you have this hot air balloon and you have like your slowest vibrations are like bags of sand that are hanging, are hanging around your, your air balloon basket. If you want to rise, you need to let go of your, your biggest slower vibrations. Otherwise you wouldn't rise up. So each time we try to create something new and we try to elevate, it is asking us to face the slowest vibrations and two important things are here is that when you choose to create something new whether it's a business whether it's a program whether it's just being brave to do something you've never done before it will ask you to look at these layers because they need to be released before you can truly elevate into your next level it was the same with me bringing forth this book yes i channeled it very quickly but then to let it publish, there were all these layers within myself that I needed to face, the layers where I was not good enough, the layers where in past lifetimes I was killed for sharing my wisdom, like all these layers. 
And through me doing my inner work, I could in the end burst this book and bring it out. But each time, and I think for me, a big shift in that was before I would then thought like, okay, I channeled this book and now all these slower vibrations come up. What am I doing wrong? I'm setting a step back, but it's not. It is because I am trying to grow and expand. These things come up. So in a way, it's a compliment. And when we then interact with these parts of us, because that is another important key, like we can, we can clear them. But in a way, you're still neglecting them. And what I've learned through embodying more love is to connect with these parts in me, to go in conversation and to see, okay, I see you. I love you. Share what you want to share with me. And the moment I do that, it's almost like before they would have walls and they are like a dark part in my in my vibration. But if I interact with them from love, they suddenly become soft. And then I discover that there's a wisdom within. But it is me just like holding space for for a child it's me saying yes you can be angry but i will sit next to you be angry scream yell and the moment you do that they soften and then they suddenly share their story and in that story with all of us there is magic so for me it was a huge paradigm shift where i before was thought okay i need to clear that energy but clearing is still rejecting that part of me because it's part of my totality. So now I just sit with it with love and sometimes tears come up and sometimes releasing, but I'm interacting with it. So I allow it to speak and through that it dissolves and beautiful things come up. So yeah, I think it's a whole different way. Love invites us to look at, at these things in ourselves in a whole different way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, it's not it's not about there's something wrong with us that we need no. to clear or heal. It's, no, it's that. just holding a loving space uh, yes. for ourselves and our inner inner child. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 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 really beautiful. And uh, uh, yeah, I had a question. It just I just <laughs> lost his name. <laughs> <laughs> it will come. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes. But um, it's also allowing all our emotions to be like. Yeah. Don't be afraid for our tears. Don't be afraid for our anger. Don't be afraid because that is also the divine feminine way. The divine masculine mm. way. The old system was okay. It needs to be controlled, and we need to know what is going to happen. But this next phase, like if we really want to birth a new earth together, that is inviting all of us to pioneer. It is inviting all of us to create something new that we haven't been, we haven't seen before, haven't experienced before. And that is riding the waves of the unknown. And in that, it is just being in this space of, okay, show me, allow everything to flow through me. Because that is also in my journey of, of my illness. Like there was so much emotion that got stuck, so much, so much anger that wasn't expressed, so much tears that I didn't allow to come out. But the moment I interacted with that from love, there was also a releasing moment. But by that, the energy could move again. So also now I'm a mom. I teach my girls to allow them to just have their emotions. Do you feel sadness? Let it come. But also, do you feel anger? Let it be. Do you feel like screaming? Do that. And in that, no, but it, it doesn't get stuck in their body and in their system. And it just, because energy is meant to flow through us. But again, we need love, centered love, the love from the divine, the love in Mother Earth, knowing we are worthy of receiving love to fully be in that space of unconditional surrender. and. Yeah, being present. Yeah, yeah and, and and for me, this is this is perfection because sometimes we try how to say when we have those uh, maybe that's emotions or traumas yeah. that comes to the surface, then we we have to say we feel more doubts, not worthy to share our lives or maybe to receive love, and then we have to say we try. This is when we sometimes we feel stuck in in in. It is like yeah. we think that we need to heal that there is something wrong with us yeah. Yeah. Um, instead of just embracing every part of ourselves. Yes. Like you said, even those, those, uh, yeah. it, it's more about holding loving space for, for ourselves. Yeah. And that's the journey of mastery. It will never in a way be easy, exactly. but what I notice within myself is because I now see the dynamic, I see the cycle of each time I create something new, each time I'm choosing to grow and expand, some slower vibrations within my field will come up. But now I know each time I go in interaction with that, how heavy they are. Because when you're in the middle of the storm, <laughs> everything, you feel everything. But now I know like each time I really sit in the middle of the storm with all these emotions of myself, beautiful things open up. So the moment you see that, you get the confirmation of that it, that it's working. I, the whole Flower of Love Mystery School got birthed through this process. So everything I teach, 
is what I what, what I went through myself. So I see the profound things that can happen when we are willing to sit with the deeper parts of my of ourselves. And, and also to share that in a group because we really need to support each other. I also have beautiful souls around me and also within the lineage that support every one of us because we all have these moments where we doubt. We all have these moments. And it's it's also asking us to be honest about that. I think also in the spiritual business, like you have the cycles of creation and sometimes it's flowing and sometimes you feel like there's something new coming and there is a moment of pause. It is like in, even in ancient Egypt, like the moment of death and rebirth. But then it's holding space and trusting and knowing and sitting with that so that the new can arise and not be afraid. But I think just in general, like we are so being taught, if you go on the journey of manifestation, if the manifestation isn't there immediately, you're doing something wrong. No, sometimes we are being asked to just sit with the uncomfortable so that then the even more magical can be birthed. And I think just in general, it's, it's letting you know if you listen to this, like you're not doing something wrong. It means you're growing. It means you're expanding. It means you're being brave enough to sit with whatever comes on your path so that you can be the contribution. And within myself and also within what, what the Flower of Love teachings have, have supported me with and daily because I, I daily interact with it. It's not something, a quick fix. It is a life path and you're deep and within that because I there are so many beautiful teachings all around the world. But a lot of times people read them and then it's okay. It didn't work or it's not for me or I understand it with the mind. But we are now being asked to understand it with every cell of our body, to feel it, to know it so that it becomes our natural, our new norm instead of the old paradigms. And through that, beautiful things arise. But it is building this foundation and that's a daily focus and a daily. And the more you harmonize your field, the less resistance will come up, the less triggers. You will notice, you will feel that this foundation is becoming stronger and more resilient to just, yeah, stand there. Yeah. I can talk with this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 90 minutes is not enough, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's very important, like uh, what you said, uh, especially in, in those times of integration and, yeah. and pause, to remind ourselves that there isn't some, it's not something that's, there is something wrong with ourselves. It's no. not just try to hold the space for us, love in space, give ourselves more love to navigate these times. And um, yeah, we have a comment from Mikalia. Yeah. Uh, yes, in these situations, I often uh, video myself so I can see and hear all facets of how, of how uh, I am feeling. Being my own counselor has been awesome to reparent ourselves. Yes, I love that. Yeah. But that is, but for me in general, that is the future. That is where also all, where I support everyone with. It's not about, it's about you remembering your own tools, you remembering your own healing modalities and going into a, into a space where you feel comfortable to do it yourself, to sit with yourself, to learn the tools and the techniques that you can use whenever something happens to harmonize your field, to sit like in a way, the old paradigm of you go to someone and it's they fix it for you. That's beautiful, but it only reached to a certain point because there will always come something when you grow and when you expand, some things will get triggered in your field because that's just part of your expansion. That's part of growth. And the next evolutionary step is asking every one of us to deeply remember, like, what did I brought with me? on this earth star to help me on my ev evolutionary journey and everyone. And I love Michaelia. If I don't know if I pronounce your name correctly, but I love that because that is the future. You feeling empowered to do it yourself. You connecting with your healing modalities, with your way of approaching yourself. And yeah, so I love recording yourself. And mm -hmm. I, I also, also share like a beautiful ways. Also when you feel enthusiastic, when you feel joyful, record yourself. So in a moment you feel doubt, you can re-listen to that beautiful recording and there are vibrations in that that just lift you up. And yeah, we have so many things within ourselves. It's asking us to remember. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and how to say, uh, I love what you said and taking that, that path of uh, trusting ourselves and our own yes. abilities. Uh, at some points, it, it's, especially in the beginning, it feels like taking risks because it feels like maybe we'll miss uh, something else or we'll yes. take the wrong path or the wrong decision. Uh, yeah. But um or especially when we are used to maybe um, let others take the decisions instead of us, mm -hmm. like we trust others more than ourselves. Yeah. But when we when we give ourselves permission to take maybe small risks 
and uh and just maybe it's it's more like a practice yes. and with time it's we will we we'll get more confidence and uh, it doesn't mean that we will never need support from others it's about co-creation we yeah. receive receive support and we give also yeah. support but more about having some giving sometimes some experiences for us where we can uh, practice trusting ourselves but there's also a difference like also for me like i have my own blind spots so sometimes someone needs to look with me but in general i am empowered to handle whatever comes on my path but i am also empowered like i, I share a lot about your sacred yes so before we would make decisions based on our mind and think like okay this is what i need but when you feel empowered and you've noticed I, I hit a blind spot also for me, when I hit a, then I know with my body, with my sacred yes, the divine teachers or the soul that can help me in that journey. But it's from a whole different, instead of needing, it's almost like, okay, I know I, I something is needed, but it's not from a, a, a like how, how do you say, it's not from a, I really need it. It's like, okay, I'm empowered to stand, but I know something is needed for my next evolution. It is from a very empowered state that we then can say, okay, this is, and you can be specific and you know, like, this is the thing that I need to work on, or this is the thing that is blocking me. Can you help me? That's from a whole, but it is just in general, when something happens and we go outside and we get triggered, we get activated, someone shares something. We know we are empowered to handle whatever is arising within us and and in a way it's also taking responsibility for for me it's really the world around me is a mirror of what is happening within myself so if i get triggered if i get activated i know i i i get to sit with a part of myself i know a part of me is ready to be seen and to be elevated and loved and yeah but that that also feels empowered because instead of me saying okay is there something wrong with the other and he or she needs to fix it i can't fix someone else so then I'm always in the situation where I feel like, okay, something is always wrong and I can't do anything. And what I notice within myself, even is in some family relationships that were very, um, how do you say, difficult, I harmonized consistently within myself and that changed the dynamic. They didn't change, but I changed. And by that, our whole dynamic changed. So that is also empowering to know that we can change the relationships around us. We can change the interactions. It's like being in love when you are in love when you fully are in love the world looks beautiful the colleague that you didn't like before suddenly you like it it doesn't matter like the the traffic jam you always stand and you just listen to a fun music but it's you changing within yourself it, this the world around you didn't change your perception changed and when we can do that when we can be in love with ourselves every day how amazing life can be yes and it's also accepting the ebb and flow because it's like yeah that's just the cycle of life so we have these amazing moments and then the next evolutionary steps ask us to face some things and not and to be okay with that yeah yeah yes. exactly <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you thank you so much for sharing yeah. that and we have a question um we don't, want the, the, we don't have the name it's it's a number yes. uh can you speak to how uh to do this when one has tried everything to let go and accept self in every capacity of awareness, please. I have faced my darkness head on with love and yet I am told some something greater than myself is holding me back. It creates great sadness as I want nothing more than to be a loving beacon of light in my world um, and to create a new way of pure loving creations for us all. Yes. Yeah, that's a beautiful question. And uh there are many things that are connected to that. So it's not per se that one size fits all. Again, we are all unique and we have had many experiences in this lifetime and in past lifetimes and many dimensions. But what I notice within myself and within others, when you truly sit in love most of the time, but this is not per se that that will be your story. But what I notice within myself is that um, faced with a very darkness or faced with something greater than myself, in the end, all is part of the totality. So when I truly, like I, I, when something like that pops up in my field, I notice that there is resistance. I notice that I feel overwhelmed or that I feel like going and do other things that are, so that I don't have to face that. But if I really want to go through that, it's sitting with that and just holding space from love, but not fixing anything. So also when we hold, like when I go in meditation or when I would sit with an energy like that or, I would call my tools, I would call my light, I would center myself, but would just sit. It's not like, how can I fix it? Or how can I 
clear this or how it's not fighting against it. It is being and and I think being centered. That's what now being centered and anchored in love, and then just saying, "Show me." Because when you are centered in love, when you are connected, you can face whatever comes on your on your path. That is also what I noticed. The more I embodied love, sometimes I am being faced with more deeper parts within myself because they now suddenly feel, okay, you can now handle me. So it's also in a way a compliment because there is something within you, something greater that is calling you forward. And within that energy that is now there, there is wisdom, there is magic, but it's you trying you being with yourself and looking beyond the surface of this energy so yeah see and i get that it creates gates great sadness because there are also phases where some things are shifted immediately but other things need more time and, and sometimes we need to have certain experiences before they can shift sometimes we need to have certain awarenesses so yeah it's really uh, also in that being in the space of of letting it happen and greater trust. It's like, like when I got my burnout, I create, I cleared a lot of things in my field, but somehow part of me was not yet re ready to listen. So I needed to have a couple of more experiences before I could. And then my body said, okay, now, <laughs> now you're not listening. So we create this chronic illness. And that forced me to go deep within. But sometimes I now see that I needed to have certain activations in place to really yeah, create that next depth level within myself. Yeah. But yeah. already, yeah. I think her your desire means it's there for you. You're already aware of it. And it's just instead of you forcing and, and feeling like there no, something needs to shift, hold space for it and go in interaction with it and say, okay, I see you from love. Show me. Yeah. I hope that helps. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Kim. And also, thank you very much for uh, our listener for your question. Um, we have a question uh, from Tanya. Also, you, you can unmute yourself. You are raising your hand as well. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello. 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 Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, my question is maybe a bit odd. Uh, like, since I was a child, um, I wanted to help people. I just had this. Uh, love and compassion to everyone and wanted to help everyone and mm -hmm. I always, always wanted to create my YouTube channel and I had so much uh, kind of spark and uh, love and yeah. you know when you get married and then you have kid and then kind of your life is just rolling on and on and on and then I feel now like I mean not all motivation is gone but I don't have this motivation anymore, anymore and I feel like the spark is gone and I don't know either it is something yeah. that comes with age. I have more wisdom to share now than I used to, but I, I procrastinate. Yes. So what would be your advice, please? Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing. And, and, and it's truly, we're never old enough to share our wisdom and our magic because uh, a lot of people that are within the Flower of Love lineage as well, they are are already older. They know what they are here for, but sometimes also lost their spark. And Maybe a beautiful thing is you first allowing yourself to follow your joy. So because when we go into very big things, like I want to share my wisdom and I want to create a YouTube channel, like you sharing your wisdom in a YouTube channel, channel will ask you to, to harmonize a couple of things within your field. And that is asking you to first love yourself because the moment we become more visible, people will also think something about it. And then you need to be so confident and centered within yourself. You can say, okay, it doesn't matter what the world shares. I am standing for my light, for my truth. But it starts with something simple, something profound. So to get your spark back, what do you like? Do you like eating an ice cream somewhere? Or do you like going to the beach? Or I, I know I'm, I'm a young mom. I know how we sometimes can just go into the hustle and bustle of life but it starts with you gifting yourself little moments of you and when you allow that you stop the contraction you stop the fighting you stop the also pushing yourself like oh i had this vision and i need to create it and i didn't create it yet because that also creates procrastination and the moment you allow yourself to create joy in your life even if it's one thing a day enjoying a cup of tea with honey in the sunlight Reading a beautiful book, it opens your field. You stop the contraction, you expand, and in that your inspiration will come in. And what I notice within myself as well is like I, since child, just like you, had this greater vision, 
but my vision wasn't per se what I'm creating now. And sometimes the universe has something more magical in place than what you think with your mind. And then you're trying to hold on. No, it needs to look like this. It needs to be a YouTube channel. Or it needs... But that again creates contraction. And the divine feminine way is inviting you to fully say yes, but to allow it to come in through inspiration. Each time I now use my flower of love alchemy, sit with myself daily, the inspirations that come in there, they immediately become something. They, they are, they're like super seeds. But if I try to create something with my mind, because I think, okay, I need to do this. Like this is the, are the logical steps in my business and nothing happens. Yeah, I get a little bit movement, but not the spark that I'm looking for. But it starts with you finding yourself worthy enough to do something. So I would invite you to think like, what will bring you joy? Maybe go back to what, what, what brought you joy as a child and do that. Maybe it's going kiting on the beach with a beautiful kite or whatever, but do something playful, allow that to come and your spark will come back, but it's you being committed to you and yeah. And then yeah. the rest will unfold. I don't know if you, if that will help, but uh, yeah. Yeah, correct. I need to just find more space for myself because yeah. I kind of run around everyone and trying to, you know, please, yeah. people, I please. Guess. Yeah. I mean, I need to find more space for myself and meditate more often than I do. Yes. But but it's not per se even in meditation because mm -hmm. like meditation can sometimes also create force. I need to sit still and I need to not think anything and joy. Because the things that will bring you joy are aligned with your deepest desires and highest calling. And the moment you just allow yourself to have joy, you go out of your own way and the universe will come to you in inspirational ways. But it's you, it starts with self-worth, again, with love. Because when you truly love yourself, you will feel your boundaries. You will feel like, okay, this is what I'm, I am ready to give. And here I'm going into overgiving. And I know that I, I got sick from that. I was consistently overgiving and finding the rest of the world more important than myself. But what I notice now is, and, and it's a consistent, it's, it's not that I do that correctly every day. It is a consistent motivation, consistent alignment. But I can be even more of, of support for my environment when I could take good care of myself. So gift yourself something. And even if it's just a cup of tea, enjoying the sunlight for five minutes, saying to your children, your family, this is my sacred time for me to align and yeah, to just be in joy. And in that, things will open up. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. If helps That's me a lot. Yes. And then your magic will come. The inspiration will come. Yes. Thank you, thank so you much. for sharing and stepping up. This is already a huge step. So thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, also thank you very much, thank Kim. You. And um, yeah, so uh, we will continue with the questions uh, in a little bit for now, Kim. Uh, I would love yes. if you can uh, tell us about the program we are offering. It's uh, yes. It's about two packages. Uh, we have the um, activating the activating the flower of love online yes. journey. It's an entire program, and also package B. It's um, sixty minutes Zoom call, live uh, call yes. uh, about activating the flower of love transmission. And uh, I will share the link on on Zoom chat and also on YouTube chat. Yes. And it's uh, yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Kim. Yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Kim, K I M. Or you can click on the special offer button, which is on the live events page, later on the replay page. And also the link will be on YouTube video description. So um, Kim, I would love if you can tell yes. us about this program. It is so beautiful, like, and and I and that again, it's also sharing like uh, the, in relation to the answer just now. I think three or four years ago, the flower of love, activating the flower of love came in as a download and I was ready to anchor these frequencies on earth. That was part of my mission. So I channeled my book in 20 hours and it's like a living transmission. Love codes are interacting with your field. And as you read through the book, and that is the same with the flower of love online journey, because it is the relation, it, it is the, the, they are linked. So the flower of love book and the flower of love online journey are the same. There is an energetic transmission as you go through it, that is interacting with your higher self and team of light to harmonize your field. It takes you into your inner garden and you can also see your inner garden like your Akashic record field. And there are growing beautiful things within your garden, but there are also weeds, weeds from the past, weeds from family lineages, weeds from many different lifetimes, from collective systems that have, that are, that are 
preventing your seed of creation, your deep desires to grow. And some of these things, it's like the iceberg. Some of these things we are conscious about, but a lot of things we are not because they even they aren't even in this conscious lifetime. So what this first activating the flower of love does, it helps you to activate, to activate love in a deeper layer. It helps you to awaken your divine feminine, to harmonize your inner garden, to harmonize these layers of illusion and distortions. And what it does through these multidimensional layers and co-creation with your higher self, as you go through it, it already happens. And yes, there are moments where you interact with, there are innovations, there are powerful tools and activations you can use also in your daily life when you feel triggered, when you feel activated. But the most important thing is as you start, you already feel how your field softens, how these love codes interact with you. And I think also beautiful to take you in a moment in an experience that you already can feel that. And then... We have the life call where we will activate the flower of love in a beautiful way and where I also use my light language because while I channel channeled this book, the light language came through, but that's in multidimensional layers infused in the book. But now you also receive the activation of love. You receive the anchoring and it is the first foundation. And the beautiful thing was, I didn't think about that. So the, my, my guides, the Flower of Love Council said, this book is going to call, be called Activating the Flower of Love. But now I understand that it was also the first foundational piece of the whole Flower of Love Mystery School. But it is like it's building. It's first like they share, like you have this bubble of energy around you, your energy field, and you have all these different things in it. You are, have beautiful things, but there are also these contracted parts. And what this first journey does through the activation of love, it supports you to harmonize these things so that when you try to manifest something, so if you try to manifest a car in your life and it is not happening, probably within your field, there is most of the time subconsciously an energy that is preventing you. Okay, you consciously send out, I want a car. But this subconscious layer is sending out, no, you're not worthy enough or you never can reach that programming from the past. And what this journey does, it supports you to purify your field. So to harmonize these energies and the moment you then send out a manifestation desire, it just goes out within, without resistance and you just magically get people and places on your path. And it really helps you to also become clear about your deepest side. So it's really a magical journey and, and it's profound to shift people get with it. But for everyone, it's different. Because your highest calling might is totally different than someone else. So for some, they suddenly feel inspired to stand in a large crowd of people where they weren't able to stand for many years because it was too impactful. Someone else gets an amazing experience in their business and suddenly attracts more people. Another attracts a life partner or just finds the confidence within themselves. It's like... This is aligning you. It's supporting you to deeply remember who you are. And then the activation, because this is an online journey, that's the flower of love online. It's a whole self-paced evergreen journey that you can go through. There are more than 25 modules. There are uh, 14 activations. You can listen to meditations. And then we have the life activation. That is the life activation of the flower of love. So I take you, we are going co-creation with each other in a Zoom call. And I will shower you with the light language that is aligned with that moment i interact with the field of the group and see what needs to happen and yeah so it's just a beautiful gathering and a deepening of these teachings in life so uh, that's uh yeah <laughs> in a nutshell yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. much more to share <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely thank you thank you so much uh yes. kim very grateful to you um first for for every everything that you are doing like for the journey that you you've been taking and also bringing uh, those codes, sharing them also, that's you receive, sharing them with, with others. And yeah, bringing, bringing more love to, to, to our world because it's, it's really needed. And like you said, this is what we are called now to, to embody yeah. and also to, to share and transmit to others. So, yeah. um, and I, I really believe that your program is can really support uh, our audience through that process of free, because like you said before, when we had a discussion, um, that this is a practice. Uh, holding the space for ourselves and bringing more love to every aspect of who we are uh, without judgment, without feeling that there is something wrong. It's more about just navigating this time with more love and more um, more support. So um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. But also that. allowing the multidimensional layers of us to co-create because there's a certain exactly. level we can understand with the mind. Also in this conversation, we're having a beautiful conversation that our mind can understand 
But through that, there are also many multidimensional codes that are coming through that are interacting with your higher self, with your body, with every part of your being. So there's so much more happening than what we can understand with our 3D understanding. And that's also within these journeys. And that's what I love. Like there is a certain layer we can harmonize with our understanding, with knowing. Yeah. But there are so many layers of us that we aren't even conscious about. And it's also the question before about the darker energies. You don't know where they came from. But what these love codes help you with is to harmonize them within your field. Because you, it's also what I noticed within my own journey. It's not per se about understandings with the mind where certain things got activated. It's about recognizing the energy. And sometimes an expression is needed. Tears, yelling, screaming, whatever. But it's not about going into the stories of the past because by that we are activating them again. And that's not what we want. We want them to be seen but and to get openings. And then the new can come in instead of us reliving that. Because that's also a whole paradigm way where we consistently keep talking about the past. But in that, our words, our actions, our everything, it is a manifestation tool. So if, if I start talking to you about my past, I consistently am manifesting that. And that's not what I want. So it, it helps in so many ways. Yeah. So yes. Now I will. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, as we say, when when a shift happens, like a lot can happen um, on an energetic level, like a multidimensional level. That's sometimes we can feel, and other times we we just don't. Yeah. But but then at, at some point when we feel the shifts like physically happen, and it it happens just naturally. It's not something that we. No changing our mind or we force it just and sometimes we we may be surprised by the the yeah. change that happens to us and when we try to notice but it didn't happen just just like that it's there was like a huge um how to say shift and work on an energetic yeah. level that we were not aware of so building momentum yeah, yeah. exactly About yeah. A confirmation of all the inner work we have already been doing and then it's just yeah. this one thing sometimes it's also sometimes we just need one word or some sometimes yeah. i watch something and then i think why am i watching this and then i see and then i hear one word and i thought okay this was the activation i needed or just one person we were meant to meet or yeah but it's again surrendering being in our divine feminine of okay life show me i am ready to receive and i have the confidence and yeah, yeah. Exactly. yes Wonderful. And uh, also, I'm, I'm not sure if you talked about the live uh, group, Zoom call. It will be on July 16. Yes. Um, yeah. So that will be a 60 minute live transmission yes. on Zoom. And yes. also, that there will be recording for those who cannot yes, there will be, uh, yes. join. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah and it's complementary on each other so you can like okay. it supports the journey because it's the life activation so and you can ask questions just like now and we can interact but i think there's always something magical happening when you come together in a group and because also groups come together for a reason there's always a collective energy so the flower of love council always guides me in a way that is aligned in that now moment to share so yeah i also i don't know if we have time for that but to take on a short journey within and to have a moment to uh, yeah. connect with love. Yeah, we still have. Yeah, we still yes. have plenty of I would love to do that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. So, again, uh, everyone, the, the, the link to, yes. to sign up for, so for the packages is yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Kim. Yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Kim. K I M. Or you can click on the special offer button, which is on the live events page later on the replay page. Um, and also the link will be, uh, is already on, on the YouTube video description and the chat boxes. And I want first to share uh, feedback from our listener. Yeah. Uh, the last one that I took her, I read her question. I am so grateful for your beautiful response. It is so helpful and like a warm palm blessings. Much love. Thank you. Yes. yes. But it's time yes. for that softness. It's like yeah. also our next growth is not is not it's not from force. It is from this softness and being held in love that you can fully bloom open. It's also in with a flower in the ground. If I keep saying you need to grow, <laughs> I'm putting super fuel on it. It will not help. It will grow in its own time. And when I speak loving language, it's the same with the. Uh, Oh, the beautiful, I, I always forget his name. Like he did studies with water. And if you share beautiful or um, beautiful words to water, you get beautiful um, like uh, yeah, images. 
Yes. Yeah. But if you share yeah. like bad words and you, then it, it just changes the structure. And it's the same with us. Yeah. We are all water. We are all. So talk beautiful to yourself. Wear a shirt with love that infuse your system. There are so many ways that we can do that. Yes. So thank you. Beautiful. Uh, thank you very much. And yeah, so, so do, you, do you feel now it's the, the time for the Yeah, I would love to. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. So whenever you are ready, I would invite you to close your eyes and to just for a moment connect with your body, maybe placing your hands on your heart and allowing yourself to relax. And you can just follow the guidance of my voice and it already happens. Inviting your energy field to center, to come back in this now moment. Just taking a couple of deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathing in love and grace and breathing out everything you do not need anymore. And this is just a moment for you to receive. A moment for you to be present, to realign and reconnect. And as we open this sacred space together, we invite your higher self and team of light. And in your own unique way, connect with the heart of Mother Earth below you and you can visualize beautiful roots growing underneath your feet that are grounding your energy. And while these roots are growing and growing, you feel yourself more centered, more connected, and again, it's not about hard force. It is about you just being present. And if you feel your mind wanders off, just lovingly invite it back to your heart. And as these roots grow underneath your feet, feel how through the heart of Mother Earth, beautiful loving energies rises up through these roots into your body, into your field, fueling your whole body, every cell of your being with these loving codes of Mother Earth. And the only thing to receive is you saying yes, inwardly, outwardly say yes. And your higher self, your team of light, your body, your awareness knows what it needs to do. And as your field opens up, feel how you relax even more. And then we invite the universal love energies to come up from above into your body, into your fields showering you with rainbow colors of love, different parts of your body receiving different colors. You connected above and below. And as your connection with love above and below is being strengthened, we invite the field of the flower of love to come around you, the field of love consciousness, to connect with every cell of your body, with every part of your being, just like a warm blanket holding you in a cocoon of love. And there's nothing you have to do. It's just being you, being willing to receive. Because true unconditional love, it just accepts you as you are. It doesn't belong you to do more, to be more, to be someone else. It is just inviting you to be present. So as these love codes of the flower of love are around you, allow the light language to support you to open your field even more for receiving love, activating love in every cell of your body, in every part of your being, elevating your vibration. Tu sake du mare suva, tu mare sare kameta, tu mare si mate du sa, tu mare su ma, da se ma ke da me si. Tameda sedi masi, tame suma te rusa, te suma te ruva, te suma te ru.
exhale. And as you receive these love codes, it is supporting your system, your body, your cells to release what no longer serves you. As you receive more love, it dissolves the slower vibrations that are ready to be released in this now moment. And again, it's not a hard work. It's you allowing your higher self and the field of love around you to support you. And the more love codes that are being activated within your field, the more your body relaxes. And it is within this relaxed state that your inspiration can come in. It is within this relaxed state that you can hear the whispers of your soul. That every cell of your body is fueled with love, is energized, is recalibrated. Ekuma kare sumate. Because you are worthy of receiving love. You are worthy of creating the best life. You feel called to create deep within every cell of your being. And it's time for you to deeply remember. Because what these love codes do when they hold space for you, they allow you to go deeper within. Because within your being, deep within, there is a well of wisdom. There is a well of magic waiting to be expressed, waiting to be explored. But it's also asking you to not judge about what is there. To not judge the way the wisdom wants to come up. To not judge the way your soul desires to express itself. To lovingly hold space for all these parts of you. So just for a moment, feel how you are being held within this space of love. And it might be that all your cells are vibrating at love, but it also might be that a part of you feels contracted or a part of your body is asking attention. And while you are being held within this space of love, just be in connection with this part of you. So if a certain part of your body is feeling contracted or feeling painful or asking attention, allow these love codes just with the power of your awareness to connect with this part of your body and just lovingly hold space. Share this with this part of you, I see you. I love you and I will hold space for you. Show me what you want to share with me, what you want me to see, to acknowledge, to remember. And feel how this part within you then softens, how it slowly opens up. And where before you might have seen this as a contracted ball or a dark wall or in whatever way this part of you is presenting itself. See how it slowly is showing the light within again. Because in the end, these parts in your body, in your field, in your awareness, they have a message. They want to join you in oneness and wholeness and it's inviting you to remember. It is inviting you to communicate with every cell of your body, with every part of your being. To honor this beautiful vessel of this physical lifetime. Because this beautiful physical vessel allows you to experience, allows your soul to grow and expand beyond what you thought was possible. So look at compassion with yourself. Look at compassion with your body because you are beautiful. You are beautiful. And see how your soul interacts with you through your body, through your feel, through your emotions. But it's you taking a moment in stillness, taking a moment in silence to witness. So while the flower of love is holding you with a warm blanket of love codes, 
feel how you feel supported to connect to this part of your body, this part in your field. Feel how it strengthens your confidence. So allow these love codes to amplify your unique vibration, to amplify your light that first sometimes have been dimmed for so many years, for so many lifetimes. But it's you not being afraid anymore of your power, you not being afraid of the magic and the wisdom that is stored deep within you. You not being afraid to go deep within, to birth what you are here to birth, to anchor the divine frequencies only you can anchor. So allow love to hold space for you, to nurture you and elevate you in the most magical way. So as this transmission almost comes to a place of completion, feel how you are connected to Mother Earth, how your feet have grown these beautiful roots, feeling grounded and supported. Because Mother Earth, the heart of Mother Earth is always here to hold space for you, to support you, to nurture you, but it's you opening your field, opening your feet chakra to fully receive and connect, to not be afraid to anchor your divine frequency. So as we thank your higher self and team of light, we invite your energy to come fully back into your body, to come fully back into your awareness and into the room you are in. Then placing your hands on your heart to fully anchor the transmission you've just received. Inviting everything that was transformed to happen with ease and grace for your body and system. And that the outcome may even be more magical than you could ever hoped for. And then in your own divine time, slowly move your fingers and your toes. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes again. And then welcome back. Yeah, that was a very, very beautiful transmission. Thank you so much. You're so um, welcome. At some point during the transmission, I felt like an opening, like space being open, like very wide, huge space. And it feels like there is excitement in it and also like, so much love yeah and yes. uh, yeah it, it was really yes. really beautiful uh tanya Sherat, that was beautiful thank you and um yeah everyone everyone would love to hear your feedback you can type uh, type yes. it on the chat box um yeah thank you thank you very much kim for the but i love that because that is what yeah. it does when you connect yeah. with love while we wait on beautiful response but when you connect to love it allows you to open up and in the opening up, the higher dimensions of you can communicate with you, can interact with you. And in that, you're able to receive and then anchor. Because there are yeah. many phases, like we can receive the downloads, we can open up. But we then also need love to fully anchor. Because when we anchor our divine frequencies, it is asking us to feel. It is asking us to, like, it's going into the roots of our being. If we want to manifest something, it is always in co-creation with Mother Earth because Mother Earth is the representation of physicality. It is the representation of our body, of our field. So it's like the cycle of creation. Yeah. Beautiful. I could smell and see the flowers. We were all dancing with big smiles on our faces. Yay. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 yeah beautiful. Uh, thank you, Mikalia. Um, such deep gratitude. Thank from you. our listener and, uh, yeah thank you very much um do you have maybe any last message uh for our audience before yeah. the end of our yes call? of course i <laughs> i want to invite you to follow your heart like even if you think it's too big 
you wouldn't dream if it dream it if it was not possible for you so this time is inviting you to take yourself seriously and to listen to the callings of your heart but also start with small things like i shared earlier your joy is a gateway into your deepest desires is a gateway into your highest calling because the thing that you are here to birth is something that will bring you joy and yes we are being asked to to elevate and that will activate certain things within our field but it is aligning to the small openings of joy and aligning to the greater purpose we feel within ourselves and then by love because it's not by force it is co-creating with all the elements of our being and from this strong inner foundation that allows us to to be who we came here to be because in the end that's what it is what it is us unapologetically being us our uniqueness i love that because that's also how i originally started my business like it was kimness me sharing my my uniqueness to remind you of your uniqueness and i love that the divine uniqueness show because that is what it is when we can fully embody who we came here to be unapologetically that is how we can be the contribution and then we get out of our own way and we can just be the vessel that we're here to be from love from yeah, full acceptance. So I would say be brave, step up in this space and embrace love on your next revolutionary step. And yeah, come join us in sacred space. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Kim. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for, for this empowering message and yeah, for everything you shared today. It was really um very powerful, very inspiring. Um and really the, the, the space that you held for us and the energy that you brought, it was really, really powerful. So so grateful to you. And also grateful that you are um, offering the, the program to, to get our audience through the activating the flower of, of love. Yes. So uh, thank you for that. And um, yeah, so also everyone, uh, again, you can find the um, the two packages on the page yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Kim, yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Kim. Um, and the link is on the chat boxes, both on Zoom and YouTube, and also it will be on YouTube video description. And there's also a special offer button on the live events page and later on the replay page. And the first package includes activating the flower of love online journey. It's a whole program. And then the package B includes um, 60 minutes live activating the flower of love transmission on Zoom. And there will be also a recording if you can't attend live. Yes. And um, yeah, so thank you very thank much, you. everyone. Uh, so grateful for sharing with us this time and space today. And uh, thank you for your com comments, your your questions. And um, yeah, so with that, I'm sending you so much love and I will see you on the next call. Bye-bye, everyone. Much love, bye.